Hi. Some of you may have heard about the uh, Chandi Crawl Stop, which is a useful uh, stop indicator for trading strategies. So oftentimes uh, we're always looking at entries uh, and we forget about exits. And more, more importantly, we often forget about stops. And stops can be um, set in different ways. We can have trailing stops, we can have uh, uh, volatility adjusted stops and so on. Now uh, the Chinese uh, uh, stop loss indicator is actually a really handy tool uh, to step so set stop losses in a very sophisticated way and it's actually quite nice to implement. Now I had this request uh, from a, a viewer in YouTube asking me to set this up and so here it is. Now I actually looked and I didn't find anywhere uh, relatively simple um, Python script uh, to set up the Chandi crawl stop. So here we go. I will show you how to implement it. And the first thing uh, we need to do is just Im import some data. And so um, I use the Y finance package and I go import um, Y finance as YF. And then I also uh, need to import matplotlib, matplotlib s uh, dot pyplot splt. So we've got all the imports that we need, and the first thing uh, we do is import uh, some data. And so I just use the S and P five hundred because it's easy. So I do yf dot download. SPY and let's say we start at the beginning of this year so we go uh, 2022 on one and we've got to have the right download um, here and there's a typo so we've got our spy Let's have a look. So we've got spy here. Download just starts at the 31st of December 2021. And we've got open high low close data. Okay, so now um, let's just uh, create a function that builds our uh, Chane crawl um, indicator. So we go, uh, I just call it CKRS Chane crawl stop. And we just use X as the value that we import just to make it short. And so the Chandi crawl stop actually has got two lines, uh, one for short stops and one for long stops. And the way it works is we've got a, um, we look at the uh, maximum of or the minimum of a certain time period. And then uh, we add or subtract the average uh, true range uh, from this. And so this way, uh, we can then uh, create a stop value and when this stop value is breached our strategy will stop out. Okay, so actually in order to do this I also need another package which is talib. So if you um, haven't got talib on your computer yet or you um, you want to use it uh, just have a look at uh, another video on my channel that explains how to download and use TALib. So if this is new to you, uh, just check out my channel below and you will find a video uh, on how to use TALib. All right, so I'm importing this here. And so what we actually can do is rather than importing all of TALib uh, from TALib, we just import, there's a, oh, today my typing is not great. So max, uh, min, and ATR. So these are the three things we need, maximum, minimum, and ATR, which is the average true range. Okay, and then we get started. Uh, so um, we can say something like uh, stop high equals, um, and then uh, we use max, which is one of the functions. And so what we need to define is our X and we use X is basically where our SPY goes and we use the close value here. And let's just, um, let's just do this 
and plot what this what this actually does so we can get a sense for it so we go return stop high so stop high isn't finished yet I just want to show you and what we can do here is we just go like this in and, and then we do plt dot plot um, and and what we need to do here is in my ta lib I can actually not import the data frames directly some ta lib versions can do this mine unfortunately can't so I need to do x dot close or spy dot close dot value so this is basically the close value from our spy data frame and so uh, here we need to replace the x with spy and then plot in and then we also want to plot our spy so we do this spy.close okay and as you can see we're gonna um, series uh, does not have value of course because it's values and then um, here we've got uh, as you can see it's not quite aligned um, what we need to do is we need to do spy.index in order to plot the actual uh, date values and then you can see here it actually plots um, the maximum values uh, of the uh, last days we specified we haven't actually specified the days yet so let's do this here we go n and then n here and then let's see we want to get the maximum values of the last 20 days so what it actually uses ta lib has got default values so it uses the default value and so if we now go okay we want the last 20 days so these are the maximum values of the last 20 days we could do this for the last 200 days and then um, because we haven't actually got 200 days in our uh, data frame it's not gonna work and here you can see this is with 100 days it's also not going to work so we actually want less 10 days and again you can see here the maximum value of the last 10 days it it stays like this and then if the maximum drops again we see these drops and the same is actually happening uh, for minimum values as well so let's do this too we call it uh, stop low and then we go instead of max mean there we go and same thing uh, x so close to values and then we return stop low as well and then we may as well uh, call the return values the same from our function stop high stop low and then what we can do is of course um, then plot this so I just copied this line here and then I use uh, stop high and stop low instead of int and so if we plot this we can see here these are the low values uh, these are the high values now this in itself isn't great because all it gives us is the high and low values in order to get the channel uh, Chandy crawl stop indicator we need to add uh, the average true range as well which will basically then shift those values up or down depending on uh, whether we want the short or the long stop and so um, that's not too difficult to do either so what we can do is we can go uh, for the long one we want to shift the stop down because obviously the stop uh, for a long trade um, is the low value so what we do minus and then we, we um, write a Q which is a, a multiplier so the average true range is basically a proxy for the volatility and so uh, we can use uh, just one standard deviation of volatility or in this case uh, just the average true range value as it is or we can add or we can multiply it with a specific value and then we can widen or more narrow uh, the uh, volatility range so let's just put this uh, Q here and then what we do is we go ATR and if we want to know in a Jupyter notebook uh, what is contained in the ATR we just go question mark ATR and we can see oh we've got 
the high, low and close values to input in the time period. Okay, let's do this. So what we can do is we go x dot high dot values then um, x dot low dot values and x dot close dot values as well as n which is our period and so we do the same here for our low stop indicator but what we have to do then is instead of subtracting the ATR we're adding the ATR and that's already uh, what it is and so what we could do is oh we forgot our queue we can then run it so let's just start with a uh, ATR multiplier of 2 and you can see here again um, I used value instead of values and so I got an error and so now this is um, um, this is already our uh, Chandi crawl indicator now this doesn't uh, look particularly good so what we want to do is we want to increase our figure size let's do that um, so our plt.plot of course uh, we can't do this uh, so we can do this plt.figure fig size equals 10.7 Okay, so now we've got a larger figure, and here we've got our Chandy Crawl indicator. Now, this is obviously also not uh, particularly uh, fantastic yet, and so what we can do is we can just give this a little. Uh, so, this is our price line here, you see this in green, and then we see our indicator. So, if the stops are breached, uh, we can see when our line basically goes above or below that indicator line. And you can also see that a range of two will give us a lot of stops uh, in and out. And obviously this is not <laughs> really ideal. So what we really want to do is uh, increase uh, the width of our indicator. Usually uh, people use somewhere uh, between the seven or between six, seven, eight or so as a multiplier. And then you can see we've got this far less. So with three, it's already a lot less if we use say five then um, you can see here our stop is hardly ever triggered it's only actually triggered once so so our long stop is triggered at this point here but other than that during that time uh, it's not triggered at all now how you set that range is up to you obviously that depends on your back tests and so on and um, then you know you also need to consider that when you do this, uh, you also, uh, I'm just using the close values here, but if you use the uh, high and low values of your um, of your uh, strategy or of your prices as well, so the intraday high and low values, then your stop could get triggered quite a lot more. So let's just uh, do this for a second. So what I'll do is I'll say spy.high and spy dot low and so I could also do this with candlesticks but uh, drawing a candlestick chart in matplotlib is a bit time consuming I've got another video uh, where I show how to do this so if you want to know how to do this check it out I'm not going to do this here because it's just too time consuming but as you can see here we've got the high and low values and so you can see actually if we plot them and so if we look at intraday stops as well so not just the close then you can see that uh, stop here is triggered here and potentially here as well and definitely here uh, if we went wanted to go short that short stop is never triggered so that's really interesting too now um, some people also use the uh, Chandi crawl indicator as a sort of trending uh, indicator so it shows you uh, a bit uh, the trend direction and uh, in that case it's actually a little bit different how to uh, plot it or how to show it so let's just have a quick uh, look how we can use the Chandi crawl as a 
indicator for for in uh, trading and so what we can do is of course we can plot it again now um when we when we uh, use it as an indicator we probably will also use a slightly different set of set of uh, um, Q values or multipliers and probably also a slightly different uh, look back like this uh, instead of 10 perhaps we use a look back of 20 or so and you can see that uh, these uh, lines then are sometimes crossing each other and one of the interesting things that we can do is we can actually fill uh, those crossing lines so the way to do this is we can do a plt dot fill between and then um, we need to give our index and then we also uh, need to go stop high stop low and we also define an alpha so we want to make our fill a little bit transparent and then if we run this we can actually see here uh, this then fills our indicator so if we comment this out and it looks a little bit friendlier and we can see that this indicator is a chart that you can often see online where it fills now uh, this is not quite perfect yet because we see that that uh, sometimes it gives you uh, that the orange line is above the blue line and sometimes the orange line is below the blue line and they're all filled the same way but actually what we want is a different fill in, in depending on where the two lines or how the two lines are cross over and the way to do this is we can go where equals and I just put a comma here and we can go like this stop high less than stop low and we define the color color equals let's say red and so now you can see that we've only got the areas filled uh, that cross in a specific way up or down and so the other areas are not filled now we can do the same for the opposite all we have to do is do this again change the direction and probably do equal as well and then we define the color blue and then you can see it's actually red and blue depending on how the polarity of our two indicators is how they they sit uh, with respect to each other and then we can use this as some sort of trend indicator now how you really want to use the Chandra crawl uh, indicator is obviously up to you I'm showing you here how to use it and then it depends on your own uh, analysis of what the best way is a lot of this is also used in intraday charting so uh, you probably want to look at this now of course then you need intraday data but the application uh, of this is still the same TALIP is a fairly straightforward uh, program to use as well in Python if you want to use something uh, different other than TALIP uh, implementing the minimum and maximum calculation is fairly easy with pandas and calculating the average true range ATR from scratch is also not that difficult so you could just find a nice tutorial if you wanted to avoid TA lib all you have to do then is write another little function that implements the ATR or instead of the ATR of course you could also use the standard deviation or volatility which is again another way of uh, implementing uh, this uh, Chande crawl indicator. I really hope you enjoyed this and I see you in the next video.